the Dallas Mavericks get better this offseason? That is the burning question we are going to attack here on today's show. Harrison Graham and Jeffrey Cooperstein here. And before we do that, Coop, what are we, like 30 subs away from 30,000 on the channel? Less than that. We're about 15 subs away. Let's get it on this video. The season is almost here. We'll be covering everything that has to do with the Dallas Mavericks throughout the 2024-25 NBA season, hopefully covering a title run as well. So join the ride with us. Hit that subscribe button. Lock us in. And here's the deal. If we're already being fed into your algorithm, that means that you want to watch this content. Exactly. So hit that subscribe button. Join us for this journey. All right, uh, let's attack this, Coop. Did the Mavericks get better? And obviously we're not going to for sure know the answer to that question until we watch these guys until play. Until the games are played. But I think it's worth revisiting the offseason moves as we get closer to training camp. And I think pretty clearly on paper, Coop, when you go Tim Hardaway Jr. out, Clay Thompson in, Josh Green out, Quentin Grimes in, Derek Jones out, Najee Marshall in, A.J. Lawson, we don't know for sure yet, but it appears that's going to be the case, out, and uh, Spencer Dinwiddie in. I think Clay for Tim, Dinwiddie for Lawson are pretty massive upgrades, at least on paper. Even if the other ones are a wash, I think you, you feel pretty good that you are going to be a better team this year. Absolutely. I think with the offseason moves that Nico Harrison made, starting with Clay Thompson, that they really feel like they improved the middle part of this roster. When you have Luka and Kyrie as your one-two, uh, along with Derek Lively, that's your core three right there. They just wanted to improve the pieces around them uh, to e try to get – you know, get to even better heights. They got to the finals last year. I think they feel like these pieces might push them over the top. And I mean, we obviously have to see the games, but I don't disagree on paper. It looks like they are a better team from last year. It just depends how all the pieces fit in the puzzle. Yeah, I, I guess I'd ask this, like if for anyone who's hesitant, I, where are they worse? Now, is their defense a little worse with their starting five? That's could possible, be. and it could be. But I also think the offense and spacing and shooting is significantly better. So I, I just don't see where – like if this team wins 44 games and everybody's healthy, I, I can't really project what happened. Like did Clay just fall off a cliff? Right. But like even if he's just awful defensively, he's going to be able to shoot the basketball. He's going to be able to – like Dirk Nowitzki, you're going to be able to shoot a ball until you're 80 years old. So – I just I, – I feel pretty good about where this team is at. I like the vibes. They get along. And everybody they brought in that, based on what we know, doesn't seem like would mess up anything chemistry-wise. So I, I feel pretty good about what the Mavs did this offseason. I do as well. What, what do you guys think? Did the Mavs get better this offseason? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, so you may get hit with the YouTube ad break here in just a second. While that happens, go on down there and get your votes in. Did the Mavs get better this offseason? Obviously, it starts with Clay Thompson, as that's the big uh, fish they got. They uh, were able to swoo him in here over the Lakers, which is still just kind of funny to think about, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think if he's at minimum what he was last year, he's going to help this team because he'll probably hit, hit about 200 three-pointers this season. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. Uh, and that's going to be – uh, a big help and you know it was you don't want to overreact to one series but in some sense of the word you need to because Boston is very likely going to be a team you're going to have to get through again to win a championship and a glaring issue in that series the only way Dallas really had a shot based on how they were constructed last year was to make shots consistently open ones and, and they didn't make them they were incapable of doing it and so. you know, and that does that Includes Kyrie and Luca as well. Yeah. That, that is not just Tim Hardaway no, and, no. and Dante Exum, whoever. Yeah, they, they just simply couldn't make open shots. At the end of the day, though, I do think Clay is a pretty clear improvement over Tim Hardaway Jr., uh, especially for what this team likes to do on the offensive end. A lot of drive and kick and whatnot. And I think Clay is just going to be a more consistent shooter than Tim was. Tim had his moments where it felt like he couldn't miss in the first half of the season. And then once the trade deadline passed, he couldn't make a shot to save his life. So I, I think you're just going to get a lot more consistency here from Clay Thompson. Yeah, and look, there will be occasional duds. We saw the playoff game against the Kings. But, I mean, he's going to be in that 40% three-point range, I would imagine. And uh, you didn't really have someone who could give you that. I mean, I know percentages-wise, Josh Green and Dante Axum did that. But on low volume, you're not going to – he. Clay Thompson is the guy who's going to shoot eight to ten threes a game and shoot 40%. Absolutely. And that has a lot of value 
uh, with how this team is built because he's going to get open looks. So uh, I'm excited about that one. Uh, when you compare Quentin Grimes to Josh Green, if you look at their best seasons, Coop, sure the splits, the percentages are better for Josh Green, but lower volume, Grimes had higher volume, and he wasn't exactly playing a, in a spacing offense that he's going to get here and a passer with the capabilities of Luka Doncic. So if he's crossing over his minutes with Luka a decent amount, which I would imagine they would like to do that with his skill set, yep. then I, I got to think we can get what we saw a couple of years ago, if not more, maybe not the volume of points, but I think he could average 9 to 10 points on 40-plus percent from three. I do too. I think Grimes could be really good in this system. Like we mentioned, it's a lot of drive and kick, and a lot, there's going to be open shooters, and Grimes is at the best in the corners. We showed you on a show last week – yeah, in that season, 22-23, he shot over 45% from three from the left corner, which was the best in the NBA at the time among qualified shooters. So who's to say that he's not going to get those similar looks here in Dallas? I think he's in for a pretty big payday if he can stay healthy and stay the course, play good defense, and shoot well from three. I really like his fit here with the Mavs. And speaking of which, I mean, they've got, what, about a, exactly a month, actually, to decide to extend him before yes. the season. they got to do it, what, the night before? Yep. So that would be October 23rd, a month from today. So we'll see if they do that. They did it with Josh Green last year. I would imagine that's being heavily discussed and considered. Maybe they want to see him in training camp a little bit, make sure the health is there because he was banged up last year. But, um, you know, if those boxes get checked off and he's healthy, I think there's a pretty good chance they're going to get a deal done there. Because like we saw with Green, and we've talked about this, at worst it becomes a tradable contract. Exactly. Green and D guys are always movable. So uh, I would expect a deal to get done there. Which player has the most to prove this offseason and leading up into the season? If you had to pick one guy – um, who do you guys think that is? I think Grimes is a decent candidate because he hasn't been on this team. Um, you know, I think a guy like Luca has to prove himself every year. I, you know, he has a lot of detractors. Um, but uh, could be a guy like Jaden Hardy, who's you know kind of yeah on the outs, so to speak. Uh, yeah, let us know who you guys think in the comments. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. Yeah, a lot of guys you could pick from. All right, get yourself a Luka Doncic tee. We know not everybody can afford jerseys, so T-shirts are available as well. Chatsports.com slash Luka T. Little Mavs logo throwback on the front. You got the uh, the Doncic 77 on the back. So check it out. Simple tee, but you can rock it all season long. Chatsports.com slash Luka T. You compare the same with Najee Marshall and Derek Jones from this past year. That other one was from the year before. Um, again, Obviously, Jones scored a little bit more here, but his stats were clearly inflated playing with Luka. I, I don't see why the effect can't be the same with Najee Marshall, especially from a shooting standpoint. He's probably not going to give you the above-the-rim play, yeah. at least consistently, that Derrick Jones gave you, so you probably lose a little there in, in terms of like transition offense and stuff like that. But I think he's a little thicker. He can defend more guys in this league, and I think he's got a chance to be a more consistent knockdown shooter. I, I lean that Marshall is an improvement over Jones, but I do think this one is to be determined. Got to see it play out. Got to see it play out for sure. Look, we know the Mavs wanted to re-sign Jones, and then there was, you know, some miscommunication. He changed agents and whatnot. So the Mavs kind of moved on before free agency even started and let Jones go to the Clippers. Uh, they ended up with Najee Marshall. I think this is a pretty like-for-like -like replacement. If anything, I think you're going to more or less get the same production out of a different player in Najee Marshall. So... I, I would call this one a wash, to be fair, but I can certainly see where Marshall can improve. I do think he's a better playmaker than Derrick Jones. Like, he can yeah, handle the ball a little bit more, more. Uh, maybe create his own shot a little bit more as well. So, I, I think they offer different things, but I don't want to diminish what Derrick Jones no. did for this team last year. Um, can, can Marshall bring that same production? I, I could only hope. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the reason you hope it's at minimum a push is Derrick Jones easily had the best year of his career yes. playing here. So. I think a guy with some similarities, but certainly some differences, um, you would hope could elevate too, playing with the talent that is here. Uh, if he doesn't, you know, it's probably a wash, and maybe it's even slightly less. Who knows? Like, uh, to your point, I don't want to diminish Jones at all. I don't think they get to the finals without him. So, yep. um, you know, those aren't massive holes, hole, uh, shoes to fill for Najee Marshall, but it's not a nothing burger. You exactly. need this guy to be a defensive stopper and uh, be able to knock down his fair share of uh, open three. So uh, we'll see how that one plays out.
And then Spencer Dinwiddie. Obviously, it's to be determined what his role is. But again, if you cut A.J. Lawson for him, at minimum, you go from a guy that is playable yes. to a guy who's I, – I don't want to be rude, but – He's, not, in he's a high never le- making the rotation. In a high leverage game, you, you can't play A.J. Lawson. He's just not good enough. Whereas Spencer Dinwiddie, it's probably going to be – he's kind of an inconsistent player, but he'll have nights where he scores 25 points. Exactly. Like, he's very capable of going nuclear. It, especially on those dog days in January and February where maybe you're sitting Luka or you're sitting Kyrie on a load management night. he give you 38 you, minutes. You can play Spence a heavy minute load and he won't blink an eye. He's going to be ready to play. He played the best basketball of his career when he was in Dallas, about 75, 76 games or so. I, I trust Spence to do a job here, and I think I think he's going to be an improvement. He he uh, uh he lifts the seal or the floor, excuse me, of this roster. That's how, that's kind of how it I just, see it. It lengthens the bench and the rotation, and it gives you more options. I mean, even if by game 40, it's like, yeah, he's not really in the rotation. Well, again, if an injury pops up. Well, if it's Spencer there Dinwiddie or A.J. Lawson, like, I, I feel a lot better that I have Spencer Dinwiddie on my roster. So Absolutely. I, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, before we get out here, I did want to pose this question. Who do you think the sixth man is going to be? And I didn't include Daniel Gafford on this because I was going for the more traditional six-man type. Do you think it, I think it's going to be one of these four guys. Uh, do you think it's Quentin Grimes, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jaden Hardy, or Dante Exum? Type their initials down below. I think Hardy's probably the outside looking in, and I lean towards it being Quentin Grimes, to be honest with you. What about Marshall? Would you include him in that discussion? Yeah, you. Uh, He's you got can, more of a specialized role, so. When, when I when I think of six man, I view like the guy who's going to come in there and kind of light up the scoreboard. So I lean that it's going to be Quentin Grimes because I think he has the most opportunity to do that given his skill set. Najee Marshall, I think, and Daniel Gafford are going to be the seventh and eighth men, but they're going to play a lot of a lot of minutes and maybe even close some games as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let us know what you guys think. If you get Dinwiddie from two years ago, I mean, he's a very capable. Uh, that's like, what he, I'm saying. He like, kind of fits the bill of being a six man, like 15 points off the bench, fills up the stat sheet, uh, dishes out some assists as well. He, he's a good rebounder for his size. So I, I don't think you're going to get that from Dinwiddie, but could you get 12 or 13 a night on more efficiency than he showed last year with Brooklyn and, and the Lakers? I do think you could get that. And Najee Marshall, I probably should have included him on that list because he does have some offensive ability and the creation aspect as well definitely uh, helps his case. So you could add Marshall as well if you want him. Good news is you got a lot of options to choose from. He's Jeffrey Cooperstein. I'm Harrison Graham. We're a week away from Mavs Media Day. It's all getting very, very close. We'll see you guys soon here on Mavericks Today. Peace. Peace.